Frozen continues to be a huge hit around the world, smashing records, breaking them, shattering them like ice. Um, and there may be a little bit of science to it, not necessarily ice powers, but maybe between, uh, as we see in the main well, secondary character that everyone loves more than the main character, Elsa, uh, she is very lonely, and yet ha this increases her uh, coldness, her freezing power. So is there a correlation uh, between being lonely and being cold? Does loneliness, in fact, feel cold? And there is a lot of science to support uh, that, you know what, perhaps it does. So we, we associate being warm with being happy. And, you know, even we see this in metaphors and, and in everyday speech. Uh, but there, there may be some things to back it up. You, I mean, you see it everywhere. If you, the ice queen, ice cold, the mm. cold murderer, you, you, you have it everywhere. Staring like ice. Exactly. Ice cold. And, and you have things from the Snow Queen of Hans Christian Andersen, like way back when. This idea that cold means isolated and lonely. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that now there are studies that back that up, that feeling socially rejected mm -hmm. actually causes your temperature to drop. So when you feel isolated, you get colder. And whereas where you feel socially accepted and valued, you get warmer. So there was an experiment um, in 2008 in which people were made to feel rejected socially and then to describe the temperature of the room. The people who had been rejected described the room as being colder than people who had not been rejected. And in another experiment, a second experiment, people were socially excluded from a virtual game that offered hot beverages and cold beverages, and if you had been excluded and were sad on the outside, you maybe wanted a cup of hot coffee to warm yourself I up. get it. I mean, you equate warmth with comfort. And I think some of the conclusions they're trying to draw is basically that warmth could have something to do with just that maternal desire to have somebody kind of hold you or something like that, where the, uh, the warmth equates with comfort. If somebody, if you're cold and somebody gives you a hug, you're just like, oh, that feels good, yeah. right? You feel better now. And I, I, I really did find it interesting, especially that drink one, because what if Starbucks just excludes us from their what game? What if they and then all us. of us want Starbucks? Coffee. I need that warm <laughs> I coffee. I love the cocoa. It could happen, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, this, this whole idea of equating what's going on the inside physical with and the, social the physical warmth. and social yeah it's it's really interesting and i think disney did a fantastic job in frozen of creating an external environment that can reflect the internal the, uh, the internal turmoil not only that what's interesting here is also part of what i read was that it, this physical and the social warmth are substitutable for each other mm -hmm. so if you do feel lonely taking a very warm shower makes you feel better and if you're in a good setting and you go outside it will and you, you get really cold it will make you feel lonelier mm -hmm. so the idea that the remedies also involve us physically just changing our temperature is really interesting and like phil said there was a study in 1958, the Harry Harlow, we've probably all seen variants of it, where a monkey was fed by a fake mother um, that was made out of wire. So cold, cold and hard. Exactly, and hard. And then there was another one that would not feed the baby monkey, but that was covered and wore in fleece and warm. And the monkey consistently went towards that warmth. So, so again, like you said, it's the feelings of comfort. Mm -hmm. And they are very primal for us. So, guys, as Christina said, we are that monkey. We, we all <laughs> we want... That's what I said. We that's all exactly want that. that. Just word for word, <laughs> we are that monkey. And I think when you see a story like Frozen and they kind of draw that theme within there, I think it's, it's actually really nice. And you can see why kids yeah. would actually relate to something like that because it kind of represents what, what yeah. kids are going through. Well, you know, if you look at the story, you know, the mother and the father, they're very well-meaning, but they do isolate their daughter. She's cut off from her friends, from her, her best friend, her sister, um, from everyone in the kingdom. She's left alone, and it only gets worse and worse and worse, colder and colder, until she freaks out, uh, decides to go to be as emotionally and physically cold as possible, and the only thing that brings her back it's knowing that her sister really loves her and is warm inside, you guys. Um, some other studies also found in 2012, I will cite this below in the description, by the way, uh, that the centers of our brains used to process texture and tactile feelings do light up when we comprehend metaphors like, I had a rough day, mm -hmm. I had, it was cold out there, I was thrown to the wolves. Those parts of your brain do light up, so perhaps that is also priming uh, you to, to have these feelings inside and you should just let them go. Uh, please, I'm sorry about that. Um, so that is, 
as scientific as we can get with Frozen. Uh, the rest of it is uh, magic. We don't know. Let us know what you think about uh, Frozen below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe for more.